authority. But what does Ibn Ishaq say? He mentions the issue about the 600 Jews or the 800 Jews that were killed. Now it's quite interestingly that the number of Jews killed in the particular incident as is related in the Syria literature, the biographical literature is not basically accurately given. Nowhere does the Quran mention that the killing of 700 or 800 Jews took place. Surah 33 mentions the fact some ye slew and some ye took captive and that's it. Those biographers or writers who have engaged in what we would call biographical textual criticism like Shibli Nomani, like Hussein Haikal, um, like even John Esposito, you know John Esposito from the Georgetown University. What they say as they basically pointed out that the number of the Quraiza, the actual tribe of the Quraiza, the village tribe or the individuals that numbered in Medina basically numbered something about four to five hundred, maybe six hundred men, women and children. That's the figures they give. Now, if that is the case, 400 to 500 were men, women and children. How on earth were 800 suddenly cut their throats? How were they killed? Where did they come? Did they come on into parachutes in Medina? Where did these people come from? Who were the Banu Quraiza? Cyril Glass in his Encyclopedia of Islam points out that they were a Jewish tribe that apparently, according to the Syrian literature, betrayed the Muslims during the Battle of the Trench, as he mentioned. They had attacked the encampment of women and had engaged in treason. And what basically happened is that they had allied with the Quraysh, the Meccan Qurayshi forces that had basically surrounded the city and engaged in a siege. What eventually happened, because they were committing treason, they stated that we want someone of the chief of the Aus tribe to be appointed as someone to pass a decision. His name was Saad ibn Mu'ad. Why didn't you mention that, Jay? And what Saad ibn Mu'ad did was he passed a rigorous judgment in accordance with what? In accordance with the Quran, the Hadith? It was in accordance with Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 12. What Deuteronomy 20 verse 12 says that if they refuse to make peace and engage in battle, lay siege with it, when the Lord your God delivers it into your hands, put to the sword all the men in it. As for the women, the children, the livestock and everything else in the city, you may take these as captive for yourself and you may use it as your Lord God gives you your enemies. So Saad ibn Mu'ad applied the Jewish law to the Jewish tribes in accordance with the book of Deuteronomy, but not as strictly as a case warranted. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, a few verses before that, it speaks about people who are engaging in warfare, people from distant cities. You are to kill them all, men, women and children. Here you have a case where people are within your proximity. They basically deserve total death, but he had judged them in accordance with the laws governing people living away in faraway cities. So the Christian bigots and other critics have not relayed the information that it was not Muhammad that had anything to do with the judgment. And more particularly, it was Saad ibn Mu'ad that basically mentioned this.